Hey everybody, we are here in Machias, New York, God's country. I mean, this is crazy up here, man. We, we drove up here, it took us about close to five hours, um, coming up to meet our one of our good friends, Isaac Rivera, been into collecting, man. Uh, Isaac, man, you tell us a little bit, man. Tell us tell us what, what got you into this stuff, man. Oh my goodness. How do you accumulate something like this? Yeah, well. How does this happen? Um, been collecting since I was a young boy. Um, started with the 86 Mets. Um, and world that world, that World Series championship team, and um, it really grew from there. Uh, after the Mets, it was Greg, it was Greg Jeffries in '88 that I got excited about Ken Griffey Jr. in '89, and I grew up in. Uh, I was born in New York City. Um, I grew up in only in New York, so I moved out here, uh, Western New York, at a young age, and. Um, the pawn shop and the coin shop was my go-to. It was my place to where I took cans back and uh, I went and bought a pack of cards. And, um, you know, it didn't, about then it was just really innocent and just about collecting. And that was really what was it was all about, was just, just getting the cards and trading cards with my friends. And, you know, flowing. being the kid on the block with the with the best cards, you know, and then obviously as you grow up, um, life takes you, you know, different roads. And that's basically what happened to me. So I got out of collecting for many years. Right. And then um, I want to say probably four or five years ago, um, by now, about four years ago, actually, um, I got hurt, got hurt at work and I had some time on my hands and uh, decided to just, check I, out, I was man. going Bring crazy. I was going crazy in my house and I started going through the little bit of cards I had left and it just, it created that fire in me again and I could finally afford all those cards that I couldn't have when That's I was a, a kid. Thing. As an adult, we could all, we could afford to do a little bit more. Yes. Kids, it's hard, you had to trade for everything you had. It was hard to find stuff and now, that the internet and things, it changed the hobby a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It, it has, so I've, I've had, you know, um, a lot of great um, Hall of Fame rookies come through my hands. Baseball, basketball, football, all the big names. Um, cards I never ever thought I would ever see, let alone to hold in my hands. Um, you know, we have a very strong community, collection community in Western New York, which, which has helped me grow um, as far as my knowledge goes, because a lot of collecting is knowledge. And, um, and so I started going to a lot of shows and making networking, making some friends. Um, and then, and so now I'm at the point in my life where um, we're welcoming back one of my children. And um, so I'm gonna turn my home, I need another bedroom. And so you can't make the space. I wasn't <laughs> gonna build another house. So right. I said, you know what, it's time to let it go. Um, I'm gonna shift my focus into a more um, what I like to refer as more of a sniper collector um, for all you military guys out there that collect. Um, I'm not spraying anymore. I'm I'm more sniping. And by that uh, he means probably like high end stuff, <laughs> hard to find stuff. You know, really really cool stuff that not everybody has. Let's say. Yeah, you know. So like um, this example. this box right here has got a ton of um, Luca rookies. We got vintage. This box has a has a ton of. 46 different cards of football, baseball, and basketball from modern to vintage. Um, and it's amazing because um, there's a lot of value just in this little box right here. Right. So as you can see in all this, and I can tell you um, out of the collections that I've picked up along the way. So that's, what, that's, what, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Like, how does one accumulate all this stuff? Do you buy like other people's stuff? Do you buy all this stuff and open it and then just store it in bins? Like, where does it come from? Like, this is an, an extraordinary amount of stuff, let's just say. <laughs> well, I guess let's start with, um, it come, it's, it starts with a very patient, significant other. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> that is willing to let you take up a lot of real estate in your home. And time and money. <laughs> yeah, to, you know, without, without um, the support I wouldn't be able to do it because most people uh, would have left by now. <laughs> this take up half your home almost. <laughs> but um, so for me, it started so that that um, pawn shop and card shop right. that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, unfortunately, so we Gabriel and I was about three years ago. 
I took Gabriel back down to Olean. That's where my mother lives and my brother lives. And we were going to go visit some family. And um, I said, hey, Gabe, I want to take you to this car shop I used to go to as a child. Right. Because at the time, he was playing a lot of the NBA games on and he was downloading all the digital cards. And, wow. you know, I tried to get him excited about real, yeah, car, real cards. tangible cards, you know. Of course. So, um, took him down there. The door was cracked open, knocked on the door. There's a little tiny woman in there. Um, she was up on like a little step stool doing stuff, changing a light bulb or something. She said, Oh, we're not we're not open and we're not um No We're not accepting pawns because it was a ball pawn shop too, you know? And I'm like, Hey, you know, miss, I'm just here to show my son. This is like I have a lot of history here with this pawn shop and the coin shop. Um and th- I just want to show my son and so she's like, well, you know, I'm Sandy Bell. Um, my brother owned the card shop, and, okay. and he passed away a few oh, months ago. Right. You know, so well, she doesn't know what to do with it. She didn't, you know, and so I, I just, you know, I just gave her my, you know, condolences. Of course. And I said I left her my contact information and said, hey, listen, you know, if you ever need help, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help. You know. Yeah, well, yeah. like help your inventory stuff, give you an idea of how to sell stuff, how to do stuff. She doesn't know anything. Absolutely, so try to give a hand. Absolutely, and I didn't know what that would lead to, you know, yeah. and I didn't know if it would lead to anything. But um, about six months later, my phone rang. She called, and um, she said, "Isaac, come down. I need help." That's and an amazing so call. <laughs> I spent spent a month there going through the inventory. And it's crazy because there's a lot that I left too. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot that they ended up um, getting to an auction house, but um, that's where it. Be- that's that's crazy. where That's where it started. It just and, piled up. <laughs> yeah, and so and so um, it started basically as you know me doing someone a favor, and it turned into well, are you interested in any of this stuff? Like, would sure. you, you know, like what yeah. do you think? You know, and so. Um, and, and, you know, and I educated her, you know, about, I showed her eBay, I showed her how to do comps. That's what we all tried You to know, because I wanted her to know the value of what they had, you know, what her brother had. Beautiful. And, um, and you, you know, this is something that is breaking. I have not shared this with anyone yet, including these two. But um, Mr. Bell's wife has a, uh, his personal collection in, in their basement. Oh, I bet. And I, I was lucky enough to see it, but I couldn't record. And there's like mantle jerseys that are signed, like, like insane the wild stuff. stuff. The entire the entire basement is a is a dedication to vintage Yankees baseball, signed bats, balls. Like they went, they were the kind of family that went to spring training in Florida every single year to see the Yankees. Crazy. Pictures with the Yankees. Stuff you can only imagine. Yeah, you know. One of a kind stuff. Me being as a, a Yankees fan, I was just like, I felt like so honored. Like, it was like a, like I was like you a mini You were like Cooper's in Egypt in the, in the Valley of the Kings. You're like, where's all this? This is like, this is like the, the holy grails of everything. You're just like a mini Cooperstown, you know? And so then, um, you know, and so, and so that got the bug, you know? So I never even, I never even went through, you know, 99% of that collection, but... I started scouring Facebook Marketplace, and then, you know, and then I joined some of the groups that, and then I met you guys, you yep. know, and then, and then, you know, and some of us just right off the bat just started clicking, clicking and vibing, you know, Couldn't and quicker. <laughs> like-minded guys yep. that, you know, just snipers. I mean, so, 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 so you now you have all this stuff, right? So now you have all your experience, your knowledge in the hobby, you're investigating, you're searching, and you you pull out and out of all this stuff, you you have this. Right? So yeah. how, how does that happen? You yeah. just pick out what, like the best stuff. Actually, and you say, all right, well, these guys, I got to take good care of these guys. Well, um, this came from, so uh, most of us, but I can only speak for myself, but for, you know, we have a problem with opening packs of cards. So <laughs> unfortunately, I have a bit of an addiction of opening packs of cards. And, and when Luka Doncic came out um i just i just wanted to rip as many cards as possible because you know he's fantastic you know and then um the same with like zion and all the hype behind them 
as well, course, you know. Lots of, so lots of modern stars. So so a lot of these cards <laughs> here are from cards that I've personally I've personally opened and ripped, and all those cards came out of within a you know hundred miles of the middle of nowhere here in Western New York, you That's know, awesome. from Walmart's Targets and everywhere else you can imagine, you know. Um, and then I also, you know, one thing I did was I started going to antique malls and antique shops mm -hmm. and kind of trying to, you know, figure out, okay, where can I go where maybe people haven't gone to find cards? And so I went to this antique mall and um, I started buying some cards here and there from this one guy who had a lot of vintage cards that were priced right. Um, I got his phone number through the mall. I reached out to him. He lives in North Carolina. And his name is Ron. I, I talked to Ron for about a year. And Ron finally agreed to meet up with me. So um, Ron is an 80-year-old old, old um, college professor. Older college professor. Ron, if you see this, you're not old. I apologize. You're older. <laughs> <laughs> But just my cup of tea, Division One basketball coach, um, mentored under um, um, Smith at North Carolina for a couple of years. Uh, like sports like, guy. Like sports guy. The people I've met through <laughs> right. sports cards, is it just insane. But so some of these older cards through in here, those older basketball um, graded, the error, the Nolan Ryan um, error card that I can't wait to see, um, all came from him. You know, wow. um, and it was, you know, it was just a, it's a lot of work. You know, people don't understand, um, as much joy as the, as fun as this is, um, it does, it does take work. It does take time. motivation. It takes it time. time and time. Yeah. It's a lot of time. I mean, there's time, yeah, time yeah. to find these, to open them, to go through them, to send them in as a process as a year. It's a year. You send these in and they say, send them and forget them. I mean, it's a year to get these back. So it's like Christmas when they come. Yes. And, and you know, one thing I will say too, as you know, someone who's, you know, mixed race, uh, multiple, a lot of races, you know, I will say that I do remember, cause I, I grew up, you know, I grew up impoverished like many people do, you know, um, and collecting cards was a way for me to be able to engage people that were out of my social class. Um, and it was, it, it allowed me to make friends that I probably wouldn't have made otherwise. And, and I really believe in some of those friendships I still have to this day yeah, because of, because of the cards that we were collecting as children. So um, instead of, you know, some kids, you know, calling you names or chasing you home they wanted to come to your house and right. open up cool some stuff. cards yeah or and they respected a... your knowledge they respected yeah. your dedication and like hey you had cool stuff <laughs> i mean it was great you know where you know you could walk a few blocks get to the coin shop go in on a pack of cards i remember we'd go to this pizza place shout out to taste the pizza one of my favorite tasted uh, pizza joints in only in we would save three dollars and 32 cents we would go get some packs of cards. We'd go there, get four slices of pizza and a 32 ounce big gulp, and we would rip and have pizza and share. It, it was just, it was awesome. So um, I do want to touch base on that because that was, I don't think if it was for that, I may not have stuck around with cards as long as I did, but um, I think because how that helped me make friends, um, it was it was really vital to me, like feeling like I fit in, you know? Of course. And um, and so I just shout out shout. I mean, the cards have really impacted my life in a positive way, yeah. and now they're impacting my life in a positive way because I get to share my collection collection I've got, and I know where it comes from, comes from a guy who owned a business, and a, a lot of these cards have not seen the light of day for many years. I know they're going to guys that are going to appreciate them, get them in yeah, hands collectors. of people that will, will value them. And I won't have to feel overwhelmed. I'll be able to make room for my family um, and do the things that we want to do as a family. Our next step as a family, and snipe collect. You know, that's that's, that's the goal. Full but circle, baby. <laughs> it's, full, it's full circle. And I can tell you guys, um, having known a lot of guys in this industry over the last several years, I would not have called anyone else besides Scott and Mark to take on awesome. 
a, a job like this because <laughs> I can tell you they brought a ton of bins. <laughs> I went to the store, we got 20 more bins, uh, and we're still short a bunch of bins. This isn't even it, everyone. Right. There's a whole lot more still in there that needs to come out here. So <laughs> our shirts are soaked in case nobody <laughs> noticed. We're soaked. I mean, this is wild. <laughs> so. uh, we're, we're gonna definitely keep you posted. I'm sure these guys will keep you posted, and I will also keep keep the group posted on you know what i'm doing now with my space uh, i'm excited about um the display that i'm going to create and the future that i'm going to create down here at, where i had all the cards and i'd be happy to actually take you inside and show you where all this was stored as well so you guys can kind of see um but in here is um, see it. we've been waiting for this card you've been telling us about this card there is a card um let's see which box we don't know which box it's in because we just opened this box today but I am excited. Well, I see a really cool one right on top. Not to stray from the subject, but this is this here while he's looking for the other card. Let me get, let me talk about this one a little bit. So this here card right here, we, we, we'll edit it later, but it says fuck face. It's called an error card. It's Billy Ripken. It's 1989 Fleer. 8.5 is a nice grade. But what they did, if you could see up close, they wrote, he had fuck face written on the bottom of his back. And the printing company forgot to edit that. So, this is a really cool card in the, this is called the error form. They have it in many forms, a black box over it, a white box over it, some scribble over it, which is really cool. It's an iconic card, an iconic card. Any collector loves this card. So, just while he's looking, pretty cool. So, I mean, we can just hit some of these cards. Well, yeah. might as well share what's oh in these God. boxes in right there, right? The so, we got, we got some 10, a 10 Luca rookie. These are, you're going to see a bunch of Lucas, high grade Lucas coming out. Oof, nine, I mean, nine fives, tens. I mean, these are that's nice That's a short grades. print right there. These are nice grades, guys. Yeah, that's an orange. And SGC is a tough grading company. They uh, grade cool. tough. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'm assuming those, if we send those to PSA, they'd be tens. Might be you tens. Know what I mean? could be looking at a lot Some of, of those. That's a pink. That's but, beautiful. But nines and 9.5s, guys. Tens, real nice. Now we're getting to vintage basketball magic second year. That's a tough card. As you can guess, as we get into the older cards, you're gonna the grades are gonna go down a little bit. Very hard to get the older stuff in great, great grades. But six point five, not bad. Jack Nicholas rookie. There's another oh, Luca oh. ten. Ooh, another one. There's an eight point five dazzle. I think I could have should have graded higher. There's a nice Ooh. that that could be a ten PSA ten. Let me tell that you, that is a beautiful Ryan Sandberg card. Woo! I can't even that's believe doozy. that's a nine and a half. That's a doozy. Beautiful right card. Brand new slabs. Red, white, and blue Zion. Green prism. There's a gold Jeter, eight Ooh, and a half. And a gold is nice. Another Ripken. Rip, Cal Ripken. There's a Larry Bird card. second year card. Very nice. Hi there, honey. Very hey. cool. And then let's get into this other one here. So we didn't see we didn't see Nolan Ryan in that one. So Nolan Ryan's gonna be in this one. Tell us Let's a little see. bit about that Nolan Ryan card. What, why? Why it's so, an error card? I got excited about this card because I'd never seen it before, and I've seen a lot of cards. Um, I've seen a lot of cards over the last several years, so uh, I got excited about it because it, it's got a wrong back. It have and you know I did try to do a lot of research on it, and well, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and I couldn't find anything, you know? And so I saw, I finally saw one, someone selling the same thing on eBay, but um, they call it the No Way Grail because they think it's the only one. But guess what? This is the only one that's hey, graded. Man. Hey, handsome boy. How are you? <laughs> there he is. The last link. That's Vinny right there. That's Vincent. <laughs> yep. So these Hi. cards go from here, raw. We don't know what's there, to here, once, once they're dug through. So. Yeah. Yep. Let's, let's see, man. Yeah, you pick out, you pick out. Now this is a George Blanda, um, but they did not, they did not grade that. I don't know why they didn't grade it, but they sent it back. Just said no grade. I, I'm almost 100 percent certain that that is a legit autograph on that wow. card. This is a tough grade on that Peyton. I know it's a gorgeous Walter Peyton card. Ooh, I've had, I've had worse looking Peytons get better grades. Could not believe it. Yeah. Oof. But, oh, there one. it is right there. No way. Oh, yeah. Let's see what it says. They do have it. Let's Wrong it back is. Rick Ruschel. Wrong yes. back Rick Ruschel. Yes. This is crazy. You don't even know this card doesn't exist. It's like a ghost. That he is has one so graded. Probably the awesome. only graded one to exist. So guys. check check it out. 
Check it out. So, look at the back. That's not Nolan Ryan. That's Rick Ruschel. That's Rick Ruschel. Wrong back. Rick Ruschel. Nolan Ryan on the front. It's a it's a it's a ghost card. It's oh. insane to hold this card in your hand. It doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Right here, that this card. Is fantastic. This is the only graded card that exists. Error. Nobody, barely even anybody knows about it because it doesn't exist. But here it is in existence. That's awesome. You've seen it. I love it. I'm so happy. Absolutely crazy. I, especially seeing and the... here's one of the ones that got you back and get that's going, right. kept you in that's and right. kept you going. Again, Ken Griffey Jr. Tough grade on that. It's a beautiful card. Mariano Rivera rookie. Nice. Nice. Earl Avril early. Cool. That's a hand cut. Early 1937. Avril. 1937 hand cut. I mean... And that's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame. There's an Elgin Baylor rookie, okay? Koozie. There's an El there, that's the Elgin Baylor like this is the actual considered rookie. That's considered uh, it's the same year, but it's like a oh, but the one an insert it. card. Yeah, that right there. So like the traded and the and the regular set. Super gotcha. super super tough cards. Yeah. Extremely Wild. tough cards. So. Wild. Um, of course you got to have Yaz. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's Yaz a six rookie. five. Is not bad. Beautiful. This six five is not bad. Oh my lord, I love this car too. Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe. Dude, that that, that. sixty three sixty four Parkhurst. Yeah, that's I mean, you know how hard it is to find these cards in even legible condition. Let alone get a four. Four is not bad. Four, four is very hard to get. Four is very that good. Is so clean. clean. Yeah, beautiful yeah, card. It really is. I mean, you got a little bit touch corners, but a beauty. Now these are a Hall of Famers. Casey Jones. I love this year. But Lenny yeah. mm -hmm. Lenny Wilkins. Beautiful cards. Now, did you, you find this in, like, did you, like, break a set, or did you just find a box full of these, and, and these were just all in there? This was all from the guy from Carolinas, the, the antique guy. The antique shop. All from Wild. the guy, same guy. Wow. Same with those other ones that I showed you that were raw that I hadn't mm -hmm. set in yet. All Beauties. I mean, these are in great condition. That's a tough grade on a Paul Horn. That's, yeah. that's a beautiful card. And look how clean that back is, too. Because of the board, you know, it's hard. With the centering you lose, and then the, the, the paper back then... It really, it was hard to stay sharp. Absolutely. So that's how they grade it so hard, and it just really, really is sharp. It's beautiful. Beautiful car. Got beautiful. to have the Giannis rookie. <laughs> Got to there have Giannis. Josh Allen. I was so bummed out that's an eight and a half because that pull, that was pulled directly out of a pack. Yeah. You know, but what can you what do, you right? Do? Tough grade on this. This is a hand oh, cut um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from Nabisco Sugar. Sugar Daddies. All cool little inserts and things they did years ago. Little cool subsets. I love those. Those are great. Like Cracker Jack cards and really cool stuff. Oh, Rip 8.5, another iconic card. Jerry West. Jerry West. Jerry West. This, is, this is. is gorgeous right here. This card. Look that card up, folks. It's a good card. <laughs> he knows. So for all, for all you guys that are, you know, may not be collecting or anything like that, I mean... It's here. It's it's out there. The collections are out there to be found. I want to. I definitely want you to know um, that you, you get more. You attract more bees with honey, and and I found that if you if you're kind to people and you treat them the way you want to be treated, just like Mama always said, that's right. That um, you'll find those collections too. They're out there to be had, and good luck. Good luck with it. Isaac, thanks, man. Thank you, man, it's been our pleasure, man. Dude. We love you. We love you. We're, we're not going nowhere, Dude. so we're gonna follow all the, what's going on with the house. Oh, absolutely. We'll keep you in the loop, what's going on, and you know we'll put this all up in the group and yeah. get it done, man. Let's it, go. Let's go finish loading up. Absolutely. Let's.